Taiwan presidential contender says wouldn't meet China's Xi without agenda. Taiwan People's Party leader and presidential candidate Ko Wenjie stated that he would not meet with Chinese President Xi Jinping without a clear aim for the talks. Ko, a former Taipei mayor, has been rising in the polls and seeks engagement with China while maintaining political differences. He emphasized the need for pragmatic discussions and questioned the advantage for Taiwan in meeting with Xi. China considers Taiwan its territory and has increased pressure on the island. Ko highlighted the importance of Taiwan's self-defense capabilities and expressed a willingness to purchase necessary weapons from the United States while maintaining independence in decision-making. Pence calls for different leadership in presidential launch video. Former Vice President Mike Pence announced his candidacy for the presidency in a three-minute video, stating that different times require different leadership. He emphasized his commitment to serving the nation and his decision to run for president. Pence will be competing against nearly a dozen other Republican candidates, including former President Donald Trump, with whom he previously shared a ticket. In his announcement video, Pence criticized the Biden administration and the left while highlighting the importance of preserving American values. Although Pence trails in the polls, he aims to appeal to evangelical voters in Iowa. The campaign seeks to position him as a leader who can bring out the best in the country. Pence concluded by expressing his belief that America's best days are yet to come. Beijing welcomes correct position on Taiwan by UN civil aviation body. China's foreign minister, Qin Gang, expressed appreciation to the head of the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO, for its support of the One China policy regarding Taiwan. During a meeting with ICAO Secretary General Juan Carlos Salazar, Qin emphasized that Taiwan's participation in the organization should be handled according to the One China principle. China considers Taiwan part of its territory and insists that it is the only legitimate government representing China. The meeting took place after the United States passed a bill in support of Taiwan's involvement in ICAO events. Qin also pledged China's commitment to the safe and orderly development of air transport and highlighted the compatibility between China's Belt and Road Initiative and the ICAO's No Country Left Behind initiative. Salazar thanked China for its support and affirmed the organization's commitment to handling the Taiwan issue in accordance with relevant resolutions. South Korea, Taiwan stocks bag huge foreign inflow in May on chip demand. During the month of May, South Korean and Taiwanese equities saw a substantial increase in foreign investment, driven by growing interest in artificial intelligence AI, and the demand for hardware exporters in the region. Foreign investors purchased a net total of $11.74 billion worth of regional equities, the highest amount since November 2022. Taiwanese equities attracted the largest inflow with $4.4 billion, followed by South Korean equities with $3.1 billion, accounting for around 64% of the region's total inflows. The rise of AI technology, particularly ChatGPT, has fueled the demand for semiconductor stocks and triggered a global rally in chipmaker stocks. Indian stocks also experienced a significant net purchase of $5.3 billion, the largest since August 2022, due to strong economic growth in the March quarter. Conversely, Thai, Vietnamese, and Philippine equities faced outflows of $995 million, $134 million, and $81 million, respectively. Foreign investors have been net buyers of Asian equities this year, expecting a less aggressive monetary tightening approach from the Federal Reserve to address inflationary pressures. Recent economic data and dovish comments from Fed officials have reinforced expectations of no rate hikes at the June meeting. U.S. and China can cooperate even in a time of heightened tensions, a House member says. Representative Andy Kim, a member of the House Select Committee on China, advocated for continued cooperation between the U.S. and China despite growing tensions. At a think tank event, he emphasized that collaboration can coexist with deterrence and competition. The event unveiled a joint two-year project called Advancing Collaboration in an Era of Strategic Competition by the Brookings Institution and the Center for Strategic and International Studies. 
The project aims to identify barriers hindering collaborative efforts and develop best practices for effective cooperation in various domains. Kim urged a more strategic and long-term approach to the U.S.-China relationship. Considering broader national interests such as climate change, global health, and emerging technologies. He criticized unhelpful and untrue rhetoric from fellow legislators regarding China. While the bipartisan committee has primarily focused on countering Beijing, Kim emphasized the potential for redefining the relationship and highlighted the early stages of a paradigm shift. The Booking Size Initiative will include case studies, workshops, strategy reports, and translations of Chinese perspectives, with a focus on cooperation based on national interests. Israel summons German ambassador to rebuke him for interference in domestic politics. Israel's Ministry of Foreign Affairs summoned Germany's ambassador to Israel, Stefan Seiber, to express their dissatisfaction with his reported interference in Israeli domestic affairs. The rebuke comes after Seibert allegedly participated in an alternative memorial ceremony in Tel Aviv, which honors both Palestinian terrorists and Israeli victims of terrorism and fallen soldiers. Israeli officials and critics argue that this event undermines the significance of Israel's Memorial Day and demonstrates a false moral equivalency. Germany funds the NGO Parents Circle, Families Forum, which organizes the alternative ceremony leading to accusations of deliberate provocation by some Israeli critics. Additionally, Seibert's role in preventing the German Air Force from participating in a joint flight with Israel's Air Force over the disputed territory of Judea and Samaria during Israel's 75th Independence Day ceremony was also criticized. The rebuke of Seibert has sparked debate and differing opinions within Israeli society, with some arguing that Germany's overall support for Israel should be considered, while others view Seibert's actions as detrimental to German-Israeli relations. China's exports tumble in May as global demand falters. China's exports contracted more than expected in May, while imports continued to decline, signaling a bleak outlook for global demand, particularly from developed markets. The slowdown in factory output, driven by rising interest rates and inflation in the United States and Europe, has dampened China's economic recovery. Exports fell by 7.5% year-on-year in May, exceeding the forecasted 0.4% decline, and marking the largest drop since January. Imports contracted by 4.5%, slower than the anticipated 8% decline. The weak export performance underscores the need for China to rely on domestic demand as global economic conditions worsen. The data indicates that China's economic recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic is losing momentum, increasing the case for additional policy stimulus. The downturn in Chinese trade is impacting other Asian economies as well, with South Korea experiencing a full year of monthly declines in shipments to China. The weakening demand for raw materials, including coal and copper, also reflects the overall decline in economic activity. Analysts are downgrading their growth forecasts for the rest of the year, and while the government has set a modest GDP growth target of around 5%, the outlook remains uncertain. Former ByteDance executive alleges Chinese government used God Credential to access user data and track Hong Kong activists. A former executive at ByteDance, the parent company of TikTok, has alleged that the company provided Chinese Communist Party CCP, officials with a super user credential, granting them unrestricted access to user data, including that of US-based users. The allegations suggest that the CCP used this access to monitor activists and protesters in Hong Kong. ByteDance denies the claims. If proven true, the allegations could worsen the geopolitical tensions between the U.S. and China, as the U.S. has already expressed security concerns regarding TikTok and considered banning the app. The Chinese government's ability to access data from companies based in China is permitted under China's national intelligence law. The former executive, Yu Yintao, also accused ByteDance of engaging in a scheme to steal and profit from content posted on other platforms. The U.S. response to these allegations remains uncertain, as it could prompt retaliatory actions from China. However, global retaliation against ByteDance is unlikely, as the user data in question pertains to Hong Kong, 
which is a Chinese territory. Digital surveillance is not limited to China, and the US itself has utilized data from American telecommunication and tech giants for tracking purposes. Rishi Sunak goes to Washington with Ukraine, economy and AI on agenda for Biden meeting. UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak visited Washington with the aim of reinforcing the UK's position as an essential American ally in the face of rising authoritarian states. The war in Ukraine, where the UK and US are the largest military donors, was a key topic in Sunak's meeting with President Joe Biden. The recent breach of a dam in Ukraine has added urgency to discussions, although neither country has officially accused Russia of the incident. Talks also focused on providing F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine and additional air defense measures against Russian aggression. Sunak emphasized the importance of economic cooperation between the US and UK for security. He also discussed protecting supply chains from hostile actors and ensuring China does not dominate semiconductor production. Sunak expressed interest in the promise and challenges of artificial intelligence and advocated for UK Defence Secretary Ben Wallace to become the next head of NATO. In addition to meetings with US officials, Sunak engaged with US business executives and attended a Washington Nationals baseball game. Israeli cabinet minister chides US Vice President Harris for judicial overhaul criticism. Israel's foreign minister, Eli Cohen, criticized Vice President Kamala Harris for opposing Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's planned judicial overhaul. The exchange highlighted tensions between the Biden administration and Netanyahu's right-wing and religious government over the proposed changes to the judiciary. Harris had spoken about the importance of independent judiciaries and strong institutions during an event in Washington. Cohen claimed that Harris had not read the bills in question and couldn't explain her concerns about the reform. President Biden has expressed reservations about the plan. And Netanyahu has not received a customary invitation to the White House. Critics argue that the proposed bills would concentrate power in the hands of the government, while proponents believe it is necessary to curb an interventionist court. The talks between the government and opposition parties to resolve the crisis have so far been unsuccessful.